Hi, it's Dwyer, Monday morning, May 20th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, if you follow the advice on this page, you got Indy as late as after game five of their series against the Knicks. You got Indy at 18 to one to win the Eastern Conference, 18 to one. So now you're dealing with house money. Even if you gave back some as a hedge in taking the Knicks in game seven, which would have been the prudent play, right? You have leverage at 18 to one on one team. Why risk it all game seven? Right? You know, you would say, okay, let me lock in a win. The Knicks were going off at less than a minus 200 in Game 7. In my opinion, you need to know when to take profits. Don't continually let it ride. So now, you're dealing with house money. Let's say you still have 12 to 1 on the Pacers to win the Eastern Conference. Right? You're playing with house money. And hardcore gamblers know, believe it or not, in the regular season, it's Indy who won the regular season series. Three games to two. So Indy's undervalued. Right now, believe it or not, to win the series, Boston is a minus 900. Now let me be up front. I believe Boston wins the series. I believe Boston is a Goliath. Um, keep in mind, too, if Boston, who won 64 games in the regular season, if Boston makes the finals against whoever, could be Minnesota, could be Dallas, understand that Boston would have home court. Right? So here, my advice is to take the profits in this round. Right? Don't wait until the end of the series to think to yourself, man, I had Indy at 18-1 and I let it slip through without cashing out somewhat. But we understand that taking any team, especially this Boston team, even though they won 64 games, at a minus 900 to win a series is foolish. So let's talk about how we can cash in our Indy at 18 to 1 that we picked up past the midway point of the prior series, right? If you've been betting Indy throughout, and if you've been following our videos, you understand that I was questioning whether the Bucks could beat Indy. You cash there, right? The Knicks, two injured. You cash there. How do we cash out? That's the question. Now let me uh, give you my thoughts. Understand, this is one man's thoughts. Understand the dynamite we're dealing with here. Boston won 64 games this year. Boston is defensively blessed. Boston is excellent from three. Right? It's very hard to find a better defensive tandem of guards than Drew Holiday, one of my favorite players, a defensive stopper, a guy who has postseason experience to the point where he picked up a ring with the Bucks. I would never have left have let him leave the building. And Derek White. Right, just to understand, those two guys are constant defensively. They're excellent, right? You look at the Pacers and you see Tyrese Halliburton. Now, Tyrese was upset when he got traded from the Kings, but you understand that this is the temperamental point guard. He's talented, don't get me wrong. But you need an assassin at point guard. You need Jason Kidd at point guard, where the house is on fire and his facial expression doesn't change. We've had 
some great temperamental point guards. Magic Johnson was ebullient, particularly his rookie year. Right? He was smiling. He was happy. He was high-fiving people. Okay, fine. That's rare. Right? I, I need for folks to figure out that, you know, a Chris Paul, as great as he has been, has no rings. Right? You need the point guard who is analytical. Indy is up and down. Right? Tyrese Halliburton is the personality of that team. I have no doubt personally that the Kings looked at him and asked a tough question, which was, gee, this temperamental guy, is he a leader? Can we trust him to come out and be consistent every night and have the kind of leadership where the team just follows him? I'm speculating here, but I'm guessing that's why he's no longer a king. The answers to those questions. Well, let me argue that there's a flip side. Indy again has won the regular season uh, series over the Celtics. When Halliburton is hot, and he's a three-point shooter, when he's hot and Indy is at home, Right, I'm just here to tell you that the team has his back. Right, I don't consider Halliburton to be the blessed passer, and I know he had great assist numbers. But he's not the blessed passer that Luka Doncic is. I need for people to actually look at Luka's passing skills. Right, they're phenomenal. Phenomenal. Right, it's appropriate that Luca's head coach is Jason Kidd, right? The two guys in terms of passing ability are similar. Obviously, Luca's a gunner, uh, putting up a lot of points per game. Uh, Jason Kidd didn't really have an outside shot until he developed that set three-point shot um, like Magic did later in his career, right? But what I want people to think about is the fact that Indy is offensively blessed, particularly at home. I believe Indy is going to win at least one of its home games. Let's talk about another reason why I'm about to suggest a bet that's high risk. I don't want anyone to confuse what I'm saying with conservative plays. They're high risk because I believe they're mispriced. You know, Indy already dealt with great defense. Even a weakened Nick team had above average defense. Indy's accustomed to dealing with some great defensive players. Right? First round, they beat the Bucks. Bucks foolishly let Holiday leave the building. I'm not saying uh, Great Dame is anywhere near. Drew Holiday in terms of defensive presence, but what I am saying is look at Brooke Lopez, who has gotten votes in the past for Defensive Player of the Year. Right? Lopez is a load. The Bucks are long. They have Chris Middleton, too. Right? This is with Giannis out. Then, of course, you have the Knicks, and let's just say people like Josh Hart are tough to deal with defensively, right? Nick culture is a defensive culture. So I don't expect Indy to be too shell-shocked dealing with Celtic defense. Let me also point out, too, that I feel that basketball is a chemistry game. I believe you make a mistake when in a big game you just drop a player who's been out into the lineup, right? Ananobi didn't really do much for the Knicks game seven, did he? Right, that's Dante DiVincenzo who really carried that team in game seven. The fans think it's all an addition. I'm telling you, it throws chemistry off to the point where it's a subtraction. I want people to think about that Minnesota Timberwolves series that just ended. 
Now, you know, I think Rudy Gobert's biggest contribution, and he's a four-time Defensive Player of the Year now, but his biggest contribution is the fact that he's a natural leader. Right? He's the guy who has an attitude. He got himself fined, by the way, during that series. After a key call, he motioned to a referee, the money sign, to suggest that the refs were trying to profit off the game. Right now, the NBA has covered it up. He got a stiff fine. He easily could have been suspended if it were David Stern, particularly after that referee Tim Donahue uh, situation. You can imagine Rudy would have been sitting for a game. That's serious stuff. You know, the referee union doesn't want to be accused of malfeasance, right? If you think a ref is negligent, big deal. But if you think a ref's corrupt, now understand, game one, Minnesota comes out and they clean Denver's clock. Rudy then leaves for personal reasons, game two. But Minnesota's on a roll because Minnesota's deep, right? It's not just Rudy, it's Cat. It's, of course, Anthony Edwards. So Minnesota wins game two. Rudy comes back game three, which is in Minnesota. You would have thought, wow, we're up 2-0. What could possibly go wrong? Well, what went wrong was the team just played a game without Rudy. Rudy threw off the chemistry. Minnesota loses game three and game four at home. Chris Stapps Porzingis is going to miss the first two games of this series. I think the Celtics think we're at home. This other team's coming off a grueling seven-game series, right? There's no way they're going to be able to match our rested intensity in game one and game two, right? So I think Boston is assuming they're going to be up 2-0. Then I believe they understand going to Indy is a tall order. They understand their chemistry is not going to be right. How many games have they missed Porzingis to this point in these playoffs? So I believe Boston is not going to cover the point spread in Game 3. I'm expecting Boston to lose Game 3. Let's also make some hard statements here. We've seen the team that comes out, they're lethal, they know it, then they're going to put their foot on the back of your neck and they're going to stomp you out. Right? In baseball, <laughs> and understand, I have gray hair now. This team left this much of an impression on me. The big red machine of the 1970s, right? I'm just telling you, uh, 76, they did not lose a game in the playoffs. Swept Philly three straight, swept the Yankees four straight. Right? I'm telling you, on that team, only one guy smiled, and that was Ken Griffey Sr. Right? Everyone else, right? Joe Morgan, Johnny Bench, Pete Rose, it was all business. It did not matter to the Reds whether they were up one run, five runs. They were going to stomp you out. Let me say this too. The high point for me in basketball are the 72 win Chicago Bulls. Right? The most jarring part of the last dance was when the story rolls out that Jordan and Pippen did not like management. Management signed Tony Kukoc, a European player. There was an international competition, and Jordan and Pippen together decided, we're not going to let this guy breathe. They stomped him out. They destroyed their future teammate. Now, you hear stories like that, and you better reach in your wallet and bet on teams like that, because that's the kind of ridiculous attitude that you want your money on, right? Dennis Rodman goes AWOL. Weaker teams call him out, criticize him, suspend him, and stuff like that. Here we find out that Dennis told Phil Jackson, hey, I need time off. He goes to Vegas. 
What does the best player on the planet do? Jordan goes to Vegas to get Dennis Rodman. Gets Dennis Rodman back. You know how that story ends. Another championship. That's not these Boston Celtics. Right? These Celtics are the talented bunch. They're talented. But they're the talented bunch who, for whatever reason, don't click at all some nights. Right? Revisit two rounds ago in these playoffs. That Miami Heat game. How long would it take Jordan's Bulls to figure out that that Miami Heat team was hot from three that night? Half a quarter? I mean, how long would it be before Jordan himself would be out by the three-point line D-ing up Tyler Hero? Right? You know what I'm talking about. Right? As Jordan himself used to say, offense comes and goes. You should be able to play great defense every night. You know what? The Celtics went through four quarters. Allowed an inferior team to shoot the daylights from three. The entire game. They beat the Celtics in Boston. Folks, there's always that game. Every Celtic series isn't there. You're looking at the team, Jason Tatum, let's face it, he's a streak shooter. Right, Tatum some nights can't hit the side of a barn. Suddenly you notice the other team is either doing a layup drill or they're shooting wide open threes. Right, you know, guys who you think are defensively blessed seem to be taking the night off. This Boston team is not a big red machine team. They're not a team that comes in and just blows you out the building. That's not who they are. That's not the DNA. This is the team that gets a lead in a series and then exhales, right? If they're up 2-0, they're going to say, hey, we got this game three. Guys are going to be half-assing it. You know that's what's going to happen. So here, you got 18-1 to leverage, perhaps a little bit less because you hedged with the Knicks in the last series. Okay, fair enough, right? So my point to you is I don't think this is a sweep. So what I want gamblers to consider in hedging is taking different options. They're giving you leverage. We're leverage hunters here. Is to look at what's the correct series score in this series. I'm crossing out Boston 4-0. That's a plus 225. Right? Boston 4-1. That's a possibility. Right? That's a plus 210. You're still getting 2-1. to one. Boston 4-2, which would mean that they, you know, lose two games, right, would be on Indy's court, game six. Boston's that good. Boston 4-2 is a plus 400. Plus 400. Boston 4-3 is a plus 500. Folks, I prefer hearing plus 400 and plus 500 to Boston minus 900 to win the series. So my recommendation, if you're sitting on Indy at 18-1 and you want to hedge, consider Boston 4-1, Boston 4-2, and Boston 4-3. Right? Let me just say, Boston after a loss is tremendous. Right? But this is the team that loses focus. This is the team that will let things slip. Those are the superstars on this team. Tatum and Jalen Brown. Right? They're going to let things slip a bit. This isn't Tony Perez 
never smiling, where you could set your watch to the idea of Perez getting 90 RBIs in a season. You knew it was going to happen. You knew Tony Perez, whatever the score. If there was a guy in, you know, scoring position, Tony Perez was likely to get the bat on the ball. This isn't that team. This isn't the team where guys like Jordan don't even think twice. He hops on the plane to pick up a teammate who's on a bender in Vegas. Right? This isn't the team that could survive a Dennis Rodman. On the Bulls, of course, Rodman's part of, what, three rings? Right? This team doesn't have that fortitude. And I'm talking about a 64-win team. So to sum up, I think the Celtics win the series. But I don't expect a sweep, even though the Celtics are a minus 900 to win the series. You're already in the green zone with the Pacers, right? They win game six, they win game seven against the Knicks. Hell, they weren't even supposed to beat the Bucks. Here they are in the NBA Finals, right? They are gifted offensively. Just like in boxing, there are going to be some nights where defense doesn't matter because, let's face it, the defensive intensity for the Celtics wanes at times. That's the only way you can explain not only Miami beating them, but Cleveland beating them. Look at the game where Cleveland beats them. You mean to tell me that no one could stop Donovan Mitchell? Let's just say I didn't feel like I was watching the Donovan Mitchell rules like I did years ago when the Pistons were throwing so many people at Jordan that they called it the Jordan rules. Right? This team's not a Piston team. Right? That team, <laughs> you saw the effort to stop the superstar. This Boston team, Donovan Mitchell in Boston Garden. Now, I'm just telling you, Bird McHale Parish, Ainge, would never go for this. Donovan Mitchell hit a three and looked at the crowd. Looked at the crowd, steered him down. I expect Boston to win the series. It'll take him at least five games, if not six or seven. Those are my thoughts. Let me handle this alarm in the background. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.